Hi everybody. This is just going to be a really quick live. I've not done a live for, for ages. Just trying a few things out. First off, uh, can you let me know in the comments if you can hear me? Because I'm just trying a new, a new microphone setup. So if you're, if you're here and you can hear me, just let me know in the comments. That would be great. And then we can get going with these first impressions from the House of Art de Parfum. I am Jad, how are you doing? Can you hear me okay? Hello, Big D Cameron. Guys, is my mic working okay here? Water Arts, welcome. Audio is fine. Perfect. Great. Welcome, everybody. Hey, thanks for joining me. I've not done a live for a long time. This is going to be quite a short live. Uh, I'm just, uh, I was sampling a house that got in touch with me and sent me some samples. Nice, Tyler. Thank you. Great. Uh, so I was going to sample these anyway. And rather than just doing it on my own, I thought I would, uh, I would do it during a live so you guys can get my first impressions on this on this house. So I'm going to go through these fragrances. I'm going to keep it focused. So really, I'm just going to answer questions that pertain to to this house. Uh, I'll do another live some other time where it's just all a little bit more general. But uh, today we're going to focus on uh, Art de Parfum or Art de Parfum. Anyone familiar with this house? I hadn't heard of them until they got in touch with me. So um, I'm really excited to check these out. Sergio, welcome brother. How are you doing? How's Portugal? I think everything's pretty all right in Portugal, isn't it? So hope you and your family are doing well. Okay. So who's heard of Art de Parfum? Okay. Yeah. Well, despite the name, they're actually a British house, which when I looked into it, I was really excited about. I love um, discovering any new house, but if it's a British house, then um, even more excited to discover them. So yeah, let's, um, let's keep all the, uh, all the questions and all the chat focused on this house because this will be uploaded as an Art de Parfum video after the live stream is over. So I'm going to get into these fragrances. So they sent me six uh, samples. Uh, this is the, um, the name of the house, Art de Parfum. And they're, um, they're quite high quality niche. They're retailing depending on which scent you get, they're retailing between 114 and 160 pounds. They are all X straight. And uh, let's, see, let's see if they represent that, that quality. So we're gonna start with the uh, Eccentric Moi. Thanks all for joining me. This is, uh, this is good to see you all. I'm not gonna keep you too long. We're just gonna be a quick, a quick in and out. There's been some long live streams going on YouTube lately, like five hours. So we're not going to go for that. 20 minutes. Uh, okay. I'm loving this already. This is, this is beautiful. So it's spicy. Um, it smells strong. This one smells really potent, but it's got a lovely zing to it. Quick and dirty, Ronald. That's it. Um, yeah, hit like, guys, if you're loving it. Yeah, definitely not kill along. This is this is going to be fragmental short. So, okay, let's uh, let me tell you about this fragrance. It's um, uh, truly remarkable and unique, just like moi. Rich red flute fruits blended with the flowers and dry fruity tea-like notes complement the dark woody base of patchouli and guyac wood, bringing sensuality and depth. I agree. I think guyac wood always brings sensuality and depth. It's got low, this, this fragrance has got loads of depth. And uh, now I've read that there's, there's tea in it. I, you know, you, when you know what you're looking for, um, it's got that nice kind of calming uh, accord that you would associate with tea. Probably a black tea, I would say, rather than a herbal tea of any kind, just, you know, real kind of strong black tea. Uh, so, I think the pepper in here is, is giving this the zing. It's giving it the spiciness. Hey, John, thanks for joining in. We're just going through Art de Parfum, a quick in and out video. Compliments to Portugal, Paolo. How are you doing? Good to see you. Um, 
That is a real, that's a great fragrance. Um, it's, uh, it's completely unisex. What I love about this is uh, how, how potent it is, how strong it is. I don't think you'd need many sprays of this, so I think a bottle of this would, would go a long way. That's Excentrique Moi. Uh, I would absolutely wear that. That is, that is a fragrance that I'm really loving. I'll maybe come back to all these, but I'll whiz through them really quickly. Uh, the next one we're going to look at. Uh, hey, Brandon, how you doing? Trying a new setup here, guys. My my MacBook keeps overheating when I'm live streaming, so I'm using my I'm live streaming off my phone, but checking the comments on my on my laptop, and it seems to be working out all right so far. This is good. Right, uh, the next one is Sensual Oud. Okay, so if you like sensual fragrances and oudy fragrances, you might like this one. Let's see if I do. Uh, you know, oud's a funny. Th I think you've got to go on a journey with oud. Initially, oud. I was, it was too much. It was too much for me. But you know, do you ever have those days when you, uh, you wake up in the morning and you can almost smell the fragrance that you want to wear, even though you've not sprayed it? You can, it's like a memory associated with, you, know, you can smell it even though there's nothing of it in the air. Does anyone get that? Well, I woke up the other morning and I could just smell a faint hint of animalic oud and I was just thinking, I'm really in the mood for a bit of oud today. Maybe that's just me. Um, so, Sensual Oud, let's give this one a go. And if no one knows about this house, I'm glad to introduce them to you because they seem quality from what I've read and the research that I've done so far. So this is quite a clean Oud. It's definitely not dirty at all. Uh, not, not skanky. So if you're afraid of Oud, don't worry. It's very clean. Like in, you know, this reminds me of a little bit of Oud Satin Mood um, from MFK, that kind of Oud. So clean, uh, floral, that's really good. Again, that, that, that seems really strong. I'm just chopping my head off here, so just let me move that up a little bit. Okay, there we go, that's better. Um, so the, uh, the information on this one is uh, seduction of the highest order, which is what we want from sensual oud. Um, blending dark woody notes such as cypriol and patchouli with warm spices, sensual rose, that's why it reminds me of the MFK, and velvety suede leather for a sexy and sophisticated scent. So we've got uh, patchouli, cypriol, jasmine absolute, geranium and clove in that one. Guys, this is a stellar oud fragrance. This is absolutely beautiful. If you like the MFK, you're gonna love this. I, unless I test them side by side, I don't know how close it is, but it just does remind me of that one. Yeah, John, it's, this is really good. Thanks all, this was an impromptu live. I just, the kids were doing some coloring downstairs. So I just thought I'll, I'll jump on and make some use of myself and be, be productive. Um, sensual Oud, thumbs up. Uh, which do I prefer so far? Hmm. Oh, I think it's Sensual Oud, that is incredible. That is a really good Oud. Um, next one, we're looking at gin and tonic. I love gin and tonic accords in fragrances, so refreshing. Often there's some juniper in there to kind of create this a fresh, clean, slightly boozy, alcoholic note. Yeah, bonus Tom, there we go. I didn't know it was going on either until about half an hour ago. So there we go. It's all exciting here at Fragmental. Gin and tonic, who's into the GNTs, guys? Good summer fragrances, gin and tonic fragrances. Okay. That is like a photorealistic uh, gin and tonic. Almost like a, uh, anyone drink Hendrix gin, where you put the cucumber, the cucumber gin, and you have a slice of cucumber in. Makes me think of that. Rather than gin and tonic with, with lemon in, it's more of the Hendrix cucumber style. Yeah, it's a London house, uh, Brandon. I was surprised because, obviously, due to the name, Art de Parfum. Hey, Ben, thanks for joining in. How are you doing? Uh, I was thinking that this would be um, a French house, but it's, it's British, British house through and through. Um, great website. Go and check out the website as well. I'll leave a link to that in the description once this live is uh, is over. Uh, gin and tonic is like a photo realist, realistic gin and tonic. Um, ben, you'll you'll know what, exactly what this one smells like. We've shared a few gin and tonics in our past. Um, so this is a sparkling cocktail of zesty herbal and bitter notes, an ice cool gin and tonic accord brought alive with grapefruit peel, sweet resinous juniper, and a slice of fresh cut cucumber. There we go. That's why it reminds me of Hendrix. Um, it's got cardamom, juniper berry, lemon, incense, and cedarwood. Well, 
this would be an incredible summer fragrance. This is this is light, bright, clean, refreshing. It is good if you like gin and tonic. If you like the smell of a gin and tonic, you know when you've just poured it or you've just been served it and you smell it and there's still the bubbles popping on the surface and kind of just popping on your face. It gives you that invigorating, refreshing feel. That's what you get from this fragrance. It's like just being handed a gin and tonic, but in scent form and wearable. So fresh, clean. Okay. So we're going to go for the next one, which is Signature Wild. Um, again, these are all x -rates. So I wonder why this is called wild. I wonder if it reminds me of countryside or the, the outdoors in some way. Uh, gin and tonic scented shave soap in the summer. Yes. Great idea. Great idea. Right. Signature wild. So signature, probably an easy to wear scent. Could be a good signature scent, I'm guessing. Hmm. So this is quite oriental. Ah, what's it, what's it making me think of? There's a, there's a note in here that's making me think. It's got like a, it's got a coconutty vibe, actually. It's got a slightly exotic feel to it. Well, I don't know if it's coconut or not. It makes me think of coconut. I thought it might smell kind of a little damp, like damp earth. Sometimes you find those accords, you know, with it being wild. I thought maybe it would have something like that, but it's totally not that at all. It's soft, it's gentle. Uh, again, all of these perfectly unisex. They don't, they don't lean too much either way, at all. Ah, uh, the the uh, Tom Ford was out of stock, was it? The Mandarino de Amalfi. Unlucky. That was too good a price. Two two hundred mil, forty six pounds. I bet it was uh, a miss uh, misprint that one. This is nice. It's perhaps a little less distinctive than some of the others. It's not as strong, it's a little more gentle, um, a bit more subtle, but it's very nice. I think this would probably be um, a skin scent, but I feel like it's got density to it, so I think it would be a skin scent that lasts a long time. Uh, might be wrong about that, but um, that's just uh, my guess, my hunch. It's very nice, yeah. A good signature scent. You know a signature scent is something that is versatile, you can wear it any time of the year, any occasion, I guess. Casual, if you want, and certainly fits that bill. Uh, unapologetically dark and wild. Uh, combines powerful leather accord with boozy and syrupy aspects of Havana. Oh, so there's maybe a bit of so some tobacco in this. And the delicacy of orange blossom. We've got cinnamon, cardamom, orange flower absolute, labdanum, davana, peru balsam, and uh, vetiver from Haiti. Ah, hey, Hilary, how you doing? Nice to see you. You are the live stream queen, Hilary. I see you in all the lives. Aren't you good? Thank you for your support to everyone in, in Fradcom. You're one of those people that it's the glue. You're the glue that binds everyone together. A bit like George Zaharoff. Yeah, that's not as if I'd have read that first, I would have expected it to be a little darker um, with the leather and the maybe the tobacco and the vetiver in there. But it's quite bright actually, but it's it's very pleasant. No. You know what? Now you mention it. Now you mention Havana Club Rum Accord. You, it, yeah, there's a little bit of that, Ben. Something a little bit boozy to it. Yeah, that's nice. A little slightly kind of exotic feel. I think that would work really well spring, summer. So that's called Signature Wild. We've got two left here. How are we doing for time? We're doing well. We're not hanging around, motoring through. Um, now this next one, I'm really interested to smell because this won an award last year. This won the Pure Beauty um, Global Award for, I think, Best Niche Fragrance 2019. Camera's lost me. There we go. All right. So this is called Encore Une Fois. And, uh, you know, if it won an award, I've got I've got big expectations from this one. OK, let's see what's going on. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe as it dries down, the, the tobacco would come out of that one more, Paul. Yeah, good point. I know, encore and voir. I, I, I think of that every time I see this fragrance, Ben. 
I was thinking of singing it, but I decided I think you'd all be better off if I didn't. Yeah, Sash, that's it. So this smells woody and uh, a green, but not overly, not overly green. Kind of the green, you know, you know when you've got a, a twig, like um, a, a young twig and you snap it and there's, it's a little bit green inside, you kind of get that kind of accord to it. 56 people tuning in. Thank you to all 56 of you. I didn't think anyone really was going to tune in because it was so impromptu, but this is good. It's got a real, it's got a real softness to it. Do I have makeup on my face? Um, no, but I'm flattered that you think I do. Thank you. Um, I'm just au naturel. And if you think I've got makeup on, then uh, I'll take it as a compliment. Cheers. Uh, this is great. This So this is smooth and a little bit creamy. Um, a little bit woody, a little bit green, herbal spicy. I feel like this is one of those fragrances. I feel like there's quite a lot going on. Maybe quite a lot of notes, quite complex, but um, it's smooth. You know, like in a lot of Roger fragrances, so many notes. They're so complex, but they're just blended perfectly, really smoothly. And I, I kind of get that feel from this. Um, would it win in the big Fragmental 2020 awards? <sighs> I don't know. I don't... I'll go back. I think I may prefer the sensual oud or the eccentric moi to this one. But it's good. I, this, any of these really, you've got to wear them on the skin to really appreciate them and, and see how they develop. Because obviously when these fragrances win awards, it's not just how they smell on a strip, it's how they wear on skin and how they develop and the story that they tell. So we're not going to get any of that from this first impressions, unfortunately. Um, all right, let me just read uh, a little bit about this one to you. A fireworks display of nature's brightest citruses introduces the salty intimacy of loved skin. Ambergris glimmers against a dark forest of balsam, caramel and wood, like skeins of gold on black velvet. And some of the notes are bergamot, orange flower, leaves, violet, incense, peony, uh, saffron, flower, ambergris, patchouli, cedar, uh, benjoin, is that maybe supposed to be benzoin? Is it another smelling, a spelling for benzoin? I don't know. Um, Peru balsam, caramel and white musk. So I think it's the caramel that's giving it this sweet, creamy feel. I love the layers in this. It's got, it's got that sweet creaminess, but it's got that woody, um, and maybe it's coming from the citruses, it's got, but it's got a punch to it. It's got a little bit of bite, a little bit of sharpness, which gives it some great structure, gives it a bit of attitude. I love that. You know, now this is now this is drying down. Even on the strip, this is this is developing a little bit more. Actually, this is very good. I don't know how much it would project. I feel like it could be it could sit close to the skin. I think sensual oud would be the biggest projector of all of these. I think that's a very big, rounded, robust fragrance. So I think that is really going to jump off the skin. I think I can see why this has won an award. I think it feels like it's very, very well blended and put together. I mean, they all are, but um, but this one in particular feels like it just balances some uh, different nuances together really well. It blends them together. It's light, it's dark, it's soft, it's creamy, it's uh, sensual. It's, it's got a bit of an exciting element to it. Uh, my French is really bad. What does encore une fois mean to all you expert French speakers out there. Okay, we're moving on. It is, yes, it is very nice. It's lovely. Sorry, I'm doing my best to keep up with these comments, guys. And thank you so much for keeping it, um, keeping it on point with the, uh, with the focus so we don't stray too much from this house. All right, seafoam. Now, I believe this one is sold out on their website at the moment, so I think it, it's a popular one. I think at this time when people can't visit the sea, we're all locked down. I think um, maybe people are visiting the seaside by, by buying fragrances like this. So, 
So this is, um, as you might expect from the name, it's got a salty marine accord. I think this is, this is one of the most evocative marine fragrances I can remember smelling. So when I was a kid, we used to go to, we still do, we go to Anglesey, uh, just off Wales, part of Wales. And um, we were right by the sea and there were these coves on the coast that we used to walk down to. We used to put our wetsuits on and we used to go uh, snorkeling in, the, in this little cove, really clear water. And uh, I remember the smell of the wetsuits when they would dry off, we'd come out of the sea and they would have a mixture of kind of that rubbery um, uh, wetsuit material mixed with the sea salt. I kind of takes me, takes me right back to that. Yeah, I thought it was another way. Um, it was so too similar, um, Brandon. So yeah, I assumed it was, it was Benzoin. Yeah, never heard that before, Benzoin. Okay, so another quite, this is quite a light one. I guess, as you would expect from a marine fragrance, but this is really, this is like a poetic trip to the seaside. This isn't dirty seaweed and that kind of uh, photorealistic coastal marine. This is, this is how you remember um, the seaside. This is good memories of the seaside. Yeah, neoprene, that's it. Neoprene and sea salt. That's what it reminds me of. Thank you, Pono. Um, so let me read you a little bit about what's in it. A true splash into the ocean, iconic notes of seaweed and salt conjure up a purifying seascape. Drift away on a wave of laconic sandal, fig leaf and weathered woods. Doesn't that sound great? That description alone just makes you want to buy this. Bergamot, lemon, incense, seaweed, uh, laurel, eucalyptus. Uh, I didn't get a lot of eucalyptus in there. Um, Gayak wood, sandalwood, patchouli and vetiver. But I just can't get the image of um, of wetsuits out of my head uh, in, in a really good way because it's you know it's it's fond memories for me. Uh, yeah, great great set of notes. Um, so yes, I you know what I um, the, these are all really well done. They're not. Um, I mean, I it's really hard for me to find a fragrance I really hate. I kind of even if it's one I wouldn't wear, I, can, I still often can appreciate. Uh, how something is made, and I do try and look on the positives of a lot of things as well. But all of these are um, are really nicely put together. I'm going to smell them all quickly one more time before I go. That's got a little sweeter, I feel. Um, the uh, the uh, eccentric moi, lovely sweet spicy fragrance. Guys, this sensual oud is incredible. This is um, can't remember what the price exactly of this whether it's a 160 or a 114 um but a great uh in in the realm of um oud satin mood which is really expensive but that is thick and sweet like a jammy rose it's gorgeous you know i'm not the biggest fan of rose I'm, I'm i'm getting there with it i'm finding more i discover the more rose based fragrances i find that i I can wear like Lyric Man is great, that kind of like spicy rose rather than the more um, traditional rose, which makes me just think of um, old ladies, unfortunately. That gin and tonic as well is so clean and fresh. Amazing. Yo, yo Pom, yeah. That was a little, when I was younger, that was a little bit too much. It was, uh, I was cool water when, uh, when Yop was around. Ah, Prada Lom you don't like, Paolo. Okay. Yeah, I love it. Enjoy that. I prefer Prada Lom low even more, actually. Signature Wild. Yeah, so that's the smooth, kind of exotic smelling one. Um, okay. Encore and Foie is very good. It's very good. I'm back to sea foam. Oh, it smells a little more citrusy now. I've come back to it as well. John, what's John triggered about? <laughs> about about Yelp, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't be getting triggered. This is not the type of live stream to be getting triggered on. You can go to Killer for that. Right. 
Okay, I'm gonna quick. I'm gonna pick a quick favorite of these, and it's gonna be between sensual oud and encore une fois. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with the award winner. Maybe I'm swayed by that. I don't know, but for me. Um, as much as I love how big and bold that sensual oud is, and I do think it is very sensual and super high quality, I'm, I'm going to go with Encore Une Fois because I feel like it's got a few more layers to it. It's got a little bit more interest, a few more um, complexities, which I really enjoy. And I think that would really develop well. Um, so Encore Une Fois is, is a really interesting fragrance. Guys, um, I don't... Sorry, uh, Brandon, I don't know, but um, I go... If you just search for Art de Parfum, then you'll find their website and uh, check if they if they ship worldwide. I'm not too sure. As soon as I've finished this stream, I will put a link to their website in the description. Uh, so you can all check that out after that. But I don't know why I've not heard of this house more. I think they've been around for a few years, not not many years, but I think the last certainly a handful of years. And I've not seen anything on YouTube. I've not um, obviously, you know, it's won an award, so it has got some has got some notice, some positive notice. But I feel like, particularly Instagram, YouTube, which is the world of fragrance that I connect with the most, I, I feel like I've not, um, I've not heard of this brand before. And it seems like many of you on here also haven't heard of it. So it's nice to put a bit of a spotlight on this brand for you guys because uh, th they're really good. Yeah, Seafoam's great. It's, it's really refreshing. Um, yeah, yeah, I'd wear all of these, to be honest. So Encore Une Fois is just about my favourite. Sensual Oud, I think my second and then I'd probably say the others I, I enjoy equally as much. I would wear all of them. They're all unisex. Uh, I think they're all fairly versatile, even the slightly darker ones. I think that you could probably get away with wearing them throughout most temperatures. Yeah, I love Noir. Noir de Noir is a great rose fragrance. Reminds me of Turkish Delight. Um, even more so, even stronger is uh, Aaron Terence Hughes is uh, Onyx. Uh, I think I like that even more. It's a little, it's, it's even uh, even stronger and more chocolatey, big, heavier on the patchouli. And the oud in Aaron's is real Burmese oud, so it just feels like it's got that bit more quality than Noir de Noir. So check it out if you if you haven't done. Uh, okay, I'm going to wrap that up there. Thank you all for joining me. I don't want this to, to go on for too long for people that might find the video uh, at a later date. And if it's too long, they, they won't check it out. So I'm going to sign off. I really appreciate you all joining me. And it's been great to um, smell these together with, with you uh, on a live stream. I think it's a, I've got so many sample sets. This is a great way of doing it because it means that I don't have to shoot an extra video. I don't have to edit. And it's just a great way of me to getting to know new fragrances. But uh giving some information to you guys at the same time. So hopefully it's a win-win for everybody. All right. Thank you very much for, uh, for tuning in. And uh, I'll do another one of these soon, maybe even tomorrow, because I've got something else that I'm excited about that I want to have a look at. So enjoy your weekend, everybody. Au revoir, Ben, and everyone else. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.